Welcome to Real Vision. My name is Santiago Velez, uh, co-founder of Block Digital, and I'm very excited to bring you today Mr. Ben Samaru of Wonderfy. Welcome, Ben. Thanks, Santiago. Great to be here. So uh, today we're going to discuss all things DeFi uh, and DeFi for the masses. Uh, I hope that we'll, we'll get into the weeds about that. Uh, and I'd also like to hear about your strategy and how we're going to bring the next billion people onto uh, decentralized uh, financial systems, uh, which I think is, is super important and, and valuable. Uh, but before that, uh, could we learn a little bit about you, uh, your journey into blockchain, uh, your, and then we'll get into Wonderfly. Absolutely. So I like to call myself a recovering securities lawyer. I, in a previous life, I, I, I practiced law for about uh, five or six years, and that was helping companies raise capital, go public, a lot of M and A, and that was in the oil and gas sector, which is after you do that for for five or six years, it's definitely it's a little bit soul sucking, <laughs> and then so I was looking for. Uh, something a little bit different. I started getting involved with a bunch of different technology companies. And then that led me to Bitcoin in 2016. And then, you know, everything changed from there, basically. So when I first learned about Bitcoin, I think just like a lot of people, my head kind of exploded and, and I went down the rabbit hole. And I was lucky enough to get connected with a lot of different entrepreneurs who were building stuff in the crypto space at that time, uh, about five years ago or so. And just having my skill set and background from a, uh, from the legal side, uh, I was working with some of these first to, you know, first to market uh, products and, and, and projects in, in Canada and the U.S., so I, uh, that was my first foray into uh, into the space, and it was a really interesting one because it was during that first cycle. It was during the ICO boom. There was a lot of really great things going on, and then there was also a lot of noise. But we were able to uh, b basically really learned a lot through that uh, through that experience. You use the term "go down the rabbit hole," uh, which is used often uh, on our channel, and I think it it denotes a particular connotation. But please go ahead; we'll, we'll get to that yeah. in a moment. Yeah, I, I mean, on on that phrase, I I think it was it was one of those things where it was so new to me at the time, and uh, I you know was coming from this sort of singular lens, uh, especially as a as a, uh, as a as a as a practicing lawyer, you sort of look at things a certain way, and and then all of a sudden. People are raising capital through the sale of digital tokens and doing it in such a quick, uh, efficient, and global way. So that really blew my mind, and it was uh, it was it was really interesting to get involved with uh, with some of those early projects. So after uh, advising companies in the space for about a year, a year and a half, then I transition out of uh, out of legal practice and then into more product and operations roles because I was learning a lot about the technology and, and just had learned a lot from working with uh, some of the some of these early entrepreneurs in the space which was really great and um, and then I started a company called first coin capital uh, was part of the team that started that back in 2017 which was an advisory firm and what we did there was worked with companies, everything from startups all the way up to multinational companies that were exploring blockchain strategy and just trying to understand what does this technology mean for us? How can we use it? And really saw the whole gambit of, uh, of, of things there. So it was, it was really great learning, uh, working within FirstCoin and, uh, and getting to see all these different applications at, at such an early stage, which as you know, Four or five years ago, we, you know, we knew that smart contracts, for instance, would be uh, incredibly useful and valuable. But I don't think we, nobody really knew what the, you know, what the big application would be. I, I, I absolutely agree, um, and I think you'll notice the trend on on this channel in particular is that we've done a, a we've try, we try our best to um, I guess kind of expose uh, the viewers to as much of a similar journey to yours as possible by uh, kind of aggregating all of these different um, parties that are building. Uh, yeah. 
one thing, and, and back to the kind of down the rabbit hole comment, I think that's a journey we all go through, uh, which is it has all of these different pathways that you can take to get there. Uh, the conclusions end up being the same, that it's a revolutionary technology. It's likely to change the world. And I think it's one of the reasons why uh, it sucks in you know, professionals from all industries, uh, because it, it, the vision is so compelling. Um, you know, in your case, what was the main problem, though, that you saw? You know, you, you had this 30,000 foot view. What was the main problem that you saw that you, made you decide, hey, I'm going to I'm going to kind of leave the advisory or exploratory area and I'm going to go build something or work mm -hmm. on something specifically? Uh, what was that? It was a number of things. I don't think there was one specific use case or, or, or thing that I saw that made me make the jump. It was just such a fundamental shift. So the first, I'd say the first big category was capital markets. And so having worked in that, you know, my entire career up to that point, and then seeing, te you know, one piece of new technology come in and completely change how things have been done for, for decades was enough, uh, enough for me to, uh, to, to make that jump. But then in addition, looking at um, really the I, I, institutional adoption of Bitcoin was that was sort of the first wave of, of that institutional adoption was was coming and and really listening to, uh, you know, some of the you know, smartest people in the room talk about how they're looking at the asset uh, as uh, as di you know, digital gold. Um, you know, Mike Novogratz was, uh, I think, the, the person that was banging the drum on that. Uh, on that phrase and it and it really hit home for for me and 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 I, I think it was it was it was uh, so it was, a, it was a few different things but it, come, it all came back to uh, the two core sort of value propositions or two things that made sense to me so I'll, I'll and and being in being in the space early at that time uh, during that sort of cycle that happened in 2016, 2017, there was so much noise. I, I, I mentioned that before and, and, and you'll know that better than anyone. If I, if I rewind back to those days, the only two things that made sense to me were digi Bitcoin, digital gold and uh, Ethereum programmable smart contracts. And, and I didn't know, you, you know, there was the potential of uh, financial applications there. You know, there was the potential of data. There was the potential. There's many different potential applications um, on Ethereum. But those were really the two things that made sense. And then there was, you know, 50 other projects and, uh, and, and potential things that were really getting talked about a lot. And, I, you know, I, like many other people that were investing in the space in that time, I bought into a lot of those as well because you didn't really know what was going to, catch and uh and i think one of the one of the big lessons that um, i learned from that cycle was really focus on where the value is and and what what makes sense to you and and and, and not to get swept up by you know promises of, of of the future and 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 sort of these very uh disconnected abstract uh use cases and that's that's my personal perspective and and i think for for people that are getting into the space now, I would definitely encourage that, especially with the proliferation of how much discussion about crypto and DeFi and NFTs there is in, on social media. Um, I think really just going back to, you know, why is this important? Why does it matter? That's a really good way to make sure that you're you're going in the right direction with, with where you're spending your time. Yeah, FOMO, FOMO is a powerful force. We've all been subject to it, uh, you know, missing out on opportunities that it, it's so early that picking a winner um, is very difficult. So you, you can you can get swept up in, in the hype and, and there is a lot of noise. Um, but I, I agree with you to kind of take it to what a fundamental investor might might do is yeah. find out what the actual value proposition of, of the network, um, what it's trying to solve for. How important is that narrative uh, to some to to, to a, a population of, of people and users, and is it going to stick? Right? Is it going to be something that's sustainable and continues to grow and and meet on its promise? I, I think that's a very difficult thing to discern, uh, per, because this space has so much complexity to it. There's mm -hmm. a lot of um, uh, a lot of people hide behind technical complexity as a way to 
either uh, shield against the shortcomings of the tech or or the use case or the problem being solved. Uh, but it is a it is a real barrier, right? You can either get caught up in the FOMO or you can uh, be confused by the tech and and what the actual value proposition is. And, and I think that keeps a lot of people out. Um, as much as it brings people in, I think it keeps a, a big population out. Hey, if you like this clip, be sure to check out the full interview and more only on realvision.com forward slash crypto. It's 100% free. Sign up now.